Hey there, folks. Hmm? So you're probably here because like me, you're on a quest to find the absolute best audio editing software for your Mac, right? Well, you've come to the right place. I've spent, oh, an embarrassing number of hours, hey, testing out a bunch of different options, and uh, I'm super excited to share my findings with you guys. Now, before we dive in, just a quick heads up. Any of the software I mentioned, you can find links to them right down there in the description so you don't have to, you know, frantically scribble down names or anything. Just relax, listen up, and if something piques your interest, you can easily find all the details below. All right, let's get to the good stuff. Whether you're a budding musician, a podcast mastermind, or maybe you're working on your indie film soundtrack, having the right tools can make or break your project, right? So um, stay with me and let's see which audio editing powerhouse will be the best fit for your Mac workflow. Let's get to it. All right. Um, when talking about the best audio editing software for Mac, we've absolutely got to talk about Adobe Audition. This is a beast of a program, guys. So the interface right off the bat might be a bit daunting for beginners. I'm not going to lie, but the beauty is in its, you know, sheer power and functionality. It's chock full of features like waveform editing, multi-track, and even spectral display which um, is super handy for cleaning up audio, like removing those little annoying clicks or background noises that just sneak into recordings. Now, Audition is part of the Adobe Creative Cloud suite. So if you're using other Adobe products, it's like um, super convenient to integrate. Um, but on its own, it's still pretty powerful. Effects-wise, there's a ton of stuff you can do. Like you've got adaptive noise reduction, which is great for podcasts or voiceovers. And there's also this really handy feature called auto ducking, which basically automatically lowers the volume of your background music when it detects speech. It can save you a lot of time, um, especially when you're trying to get that professional sound without having to manually adjust everything. Now, let's talk performance on a Mac. It's smooth, guys, like really smooth. It's built to work well with Mac ecosystem, so you can expect stability and, of course, high quality audio processing. The thing is, you'll need a decent Mac to run it smoothly especially for bigger projects, because it can be quite resource intensive. Lastly, the elephant in the room, the price is not cheap. Nope, it, it's subscription based, which can be a downside if you're against that model or on a budget. But um, sometimes you really do get what you pay for, right? And with Audition, it's industry level software. So it's an investment, but for serious audio geeks and professionals, uh, it's probably going to be worth it. All right, that about sums up Adobe Audition for Mac, guys. All right, um, jumping right in. Let's talk about Audacity. So it's like this open source audio editing software that's completely free and you can use it on your Mac, which is super handy. Now, the thing about Audacity is it's pretty robust for something that doesn't cost a dime. You can record live audio through a microphone or a mixer and you can digitize recordings from other media. And uh, one of the cool things I appreciated about Audacity is the pile of effects it has. Like you're looking at noise reduction, you've got an equalizer, and a bunch of other effects that can really help you tweak your audio. But um, I got to mention the interface might throw some people off. It's, it's not the slickest. It looks kind of dated and can be a bit overwhelming if you're just starting out. But like once you get the hang of it, it's pretty straightforward. Now about performance on a Mac, I find that Audacity is relatively light on resources, which is great if you're not running the latest model. However, I've noticed it can, you know, sometimes crash if you're working with really large files or doing a ton of changes at once. Just make sure to keep uh, saving your work. And uh, the last thing I want to touch on is support and community. Uh, th since it's open source, there's a pretty active community out there. So if you hit a snag, there are forums and plenty of resources where you can find help. But um, you won't get like official customer service since it's free, which can be a downside if you're using this for more professional work. Overall, I think Audacity is a solid choice for Mac users looking for a free audio editor. Just, you know, be ready to spend a bit of time learning the ropes. So let's dive into Logic Pro X, which is um, pretty much like the go to digital audio workstation for Mac users, especially if you're deep in the whole Apple ecosystem. The first thing you'll notice when you open it up is the interface, which is super sleek. I mean, it's got this kind of professional vibe going on, which might be a bit intimidating if you're new to this stuff. But hey, once you get the hang of it, it's like super intuitive. Now, talking about features, um, Logic Pro X is just packed with them. The area, you've got this insane library of loops and I mean thousands of them and they can be a real game changer when you're trying to lay down some ideas quickly. Plus the virtual instruments, they sound so good. It's almost like having a real band at your fingertips and um, the smart tempo feature is a lifesaver, honestly. 
it helps keep all your audio perfectly in time without, you know, the pain of manually adjusting tempos and stuff. But let's not forget about the flex time and pitch functions. I mean, if you're recording and you've got that one perfect take, but oops, there's a slight timing or pitch issue. Logic Pro X lets you fix that without re-recording the whole thing, which is um, pretty awesome when you're on a tight schedule or just don't feel like going for take number. I don't know, 77. And um, for the pros out there, the mixing and mastering tools are top notch. You've got all these plugins, EQs, compressors, and they're all super high quality. Like they can literally make your mix sound like it's been touched by a Grammy winning engineer. Plus with the, the recent updates and support from Apple, they're always adding new stuff, fixing bugs you know, keeping it fresh. So yeah, Logic Pro X, definitely one of the best audio editing options for Mac users. If you're into creating music or just want to produce really polished audio content, it's totally worth checking out. All right, let's dive into GarageBand, which um, if you're a Mac user, you might already know is like the go-to audio editing software for lots of folks. So GarageBand is this really nifty tool that's totally free if you have a Mac, right? Which is pretty awesome considering what you can do with it. It's packed with a bunch of features that honestly for most users, especially, you know, if you're just getting started with audio editing, it's more than enough. So first off, the interface is super user friendly. I mean, they I've designed it so you can just jump right in. Um, you've got your different tracks laid out for you. Uh, and it's easy to add new ones, whether you're recording live or you're importing audio. And you've got these loops built in, which um, is great for getting creative without needing to you know, pull in external samples or record your own stuff from scratch every single time. Now, when it comes to editing, um, GarageBand is pretty straightforward. All right, you can cut, copy, paste, and move clips around with these. There's also a bunch of effects and plugins, which um, I found to be relatively intuitive to use. Plus, they sound quite good, actually, for something that comes free with your computer. And you can customize these to get the sound you're looking for, which is, you know, pretty important when you're trying to make your audio just right. But here's the thing, um, if you're more of a professional or you're looking to do some really advanced audio work, you might find GarageBand a bit limiting. It's definitely geared more towards beginners to intermediates, but that said, it's a brilliant starting point. And for many, it remains their go-to because it just um, simplifies the whole process. So if you're in that category of users, definitely um, give GarageBand a try. For free software, it's pretty hard to beat. I, um, that pretty much wraps up my rundown on the best audio editing software for Mac. I really hope you found this overview helpful and that it, you know, guides you to find the perfect tool for all your audio editing needs. See, if you want to check out any of these products further, don't worry. I've got you covered. Just head down to the description below. All the links are right there for your convenience. And hey, if you like this video or found it enlightening in any way, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel and keeps you in the loop for all the latest software reviews and tutorials I put out. Also, if there's anything you're unsure about or maybe you've got a question about something I covered or didn't cover in the video, don't hesitate to drop me a comment down below. I'm always keen to help out where I can. I love chatting with you folks. Oh, and definitely take a moment to check out my other videos. You know, I've got a whole bunch of stuff that could help you out with your audio projects or any other software queries you might have. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Keep editing, everybody. See ya.